to Jesus, glory to Jesus, and blessings to this this beautiful city of Cincinnati. What a beautiful day it is. And as you can see, I am here today in order to share the good news, the gospel of the Lord Jesus Christ. And in case you are wondering why we share this gospel, it's because Jesus himself, the master, the king of heaven, he said, go into all the world and preach the gospel. Those who believe about shall be saved. But those who do not believe shall be condemned. So daily it is in God's heart for people to come to Him and experience salvation and redemption. And so for this purpose, one of the ways that God allow that to happen is by sending people called messengers to proclaim the good news because the bible says how will they hear if there is no messenger and so my friend today is a very privilege and opportunity in case you are just passing by in case you are just passing by i want to tell you that this is not a coincidence it's a great privilege and opportunity that god has for you today for you to hear the gospel and turn to him For God so loved the world that He gave His only begotten Son, that whosoever believes in Him will not perish, but have eternal life for their soul. So in case you are sitting down or you are at work right now in your office and you are hearing the sound of my voice, I want to let you know that God is speaking to you today. Maybe you are not ready for God to speak to you right now or today, but God has been speaking to you just that right now he's just using a human being to speak to you and so today is the day of salvation Jesus Christ said go into all the world and preach the gospel he said those who believe and are baptized shall be saved and he said those who do not believe shall be condemned so in the heart of the father of heaven the father in heaven it's not for anyone to perish the heart of God is never for anyone to be condemned. But the heart of God is full of love and compassion such that He chooses to come to people even in dreams, visions and tell them, go and tell these people that I love them and that they need to repent. Go and tell them they need to turn away from their evil ways. Things like that. It's to show that God really cares for you, you know. It just um, A sign that God cares for you is not because God gives you a Lamborghini. Because that's that a lot of people have today he said oh when they say god cares for me that's when they have thousands of millions of dollars in the account when they don't have it they say god doesn't care for me if that's what caring 
the care of God is defined in your own perspective, you're on the wrong perspective. But I want to tell you what caring in the sight of God is. When God wants to bring you closer, that's a lot of care. That's much care. In fact, the fact that you're breathing right now, the oxygen that you don't pay with money, you don't pay God for breathing oxygen. I've said it before, all of us here live on borrowed air. The body we have, we borrowed it from God. The oxygen we are breathing, we borrowed it from God. The planet we are on, we borrowed it from God. The houses we built on this planet, we borrowed it from God. The materials we use to make these cars, these books, these pavements, we borrowed it from God. Everything we are living on borrow. But you see, God doesn't require you to pay Him back. The only thing God requires of you is to acknowledge Him as your Father and have a relationship with Him. And that is why I will introduce you to this person of the Lord Jesus to let you know that Jesus Christ 2,000 years ago came to the world in order to pay a huge price on the cross of Calvary. The Bible says on the cross of Calvary, Jesus revealed the expression of love. He revealed what love is truly is. Because during the Torah, in the time of Moses, during the time of the law, all they knew was kill your enemies, kill your enemies. Then Jesus came and revealed a higher type of love and said, love your enemies. And they were like, what do you mean? What do you mean? Because Jesus Christ is the perfect, perfect love. Jesus Christ revealed perfection because he himself is perfect. But before I introduce you more about this Jesus Christ, I have to take you back to the beginning of the world. The Bible says, in the beginning, God made heaven and the earth. God created the heavens and the earth. It is God's nature to create. God bless you, brother. That's why you have that creation ability in you too. Because it is God's nature to create. But God created you. But we create robots. But God created you. But you see, God does not treat us as robots. God gave us a will. In some way, computers don't have their own will. If you give their own will, they will mess up the system. But you see, we are like God's robots, but with a will. God gave us a will. That is why you have a will to choose to curse God. You have a will to choose to worship God. You have the will to choose to mock God. But whatever side you choose, there are consequences attached to those wills. But what you need to understand is, in the beginning, God created Adam and Eve. His own robots. But the robots of God are special because God gave them a will. God gave them the power of choice. But our own robots, we program them. Go to the room. Go this way. Do this. So we program them. They don't have a will on their own. So we create because we also have that creation ability in us. Because we, we inherited it from the Father. Our Father in Heaven is a creator itself. But what I want to tell you here is, God created you with a special will. In case you say, why don't God just force me to worship Him? God doesn't force you. He wants it to be out of your will. To willingly do it. Love is not by force and God knows that better. That's why God says He doesn't want to force you to do it. But you see, when God created Adam and Eve, God put Adam and Eve in the Garden of Eden. And God gave Adam and Eve one command. God said, Adam and Eve, you can eat any fruit in the garden, but do not eat the fruit in the middle of the garden. Guess what? Before the day was gone, the, the serpent deceived the woman. The woman ate the fruit and then came to Adam. Adam, Adam, gave it to Adam. Adam got the fruit and ate the fruit. God warned us already that the day we eat the fruit, we will die. Spiritually and physically. That is why you are physically able to die. But God, thanks to Jesus, we are promised eternal life. Hallelujah. The Bible says from the day we ate the fruit, we were not able to die physically and spiritually. And when God walked in the garden, Adam and Eve were hiding. God said, Adam, where are you? He said, I'm hiding God. God said, did you eat the fruit I told you not to eat? He's like, well, he, he started a blame game. Instead of saying yes, 
He said, well, the woman, the woman you gave me, gave me the fruit to eat. And the, the woman, instead of saying, yes, I ate, she blamed the serpent. She said, the serpent gave me to eat. God saw that none of them were ready to repent. All of them were playing the blame game. The husband blames the wife, the wife blames the husband, the, the wife blames the snake. So there was a blame game. None of them were, re were really ready to repent. And the Bible says that God kicked them out of the Garden of Eden. That was the only solution. Why? Because if they ate the tree of life, they would have been totally lost forever and ever for eternity. But God had a plan. That's why the Bible says in Jeremiah 29, verse 11 to 13, I have a plan for you. Not of evil, but of good. To give you an expected end. These are the plans of God. The God that you are running away from. The God that you are ignoring every day. The God that you are cursing every day. This God says he has a plan for you. Not, not thought of evil, but thought of good. The Bible says to give you an expected end. I'm first of all introducing you this God. This God. So that he is revealed to you because God is not studied. I know a lot of people say, I've studied theology. I don't see anything about Jesus. All right. It's because you studied in your head. God is revealed to you. So my goal as I'm preaching this gospel is that God is revealed to you. So that Jesus is revealed to you. And if God is revealed to you, you will discover that the love of God will engulf your soul. And the power of God will take over you. And you will experience grace and the mercy of God. Because I know a lot of people say, I know Jesus, but I know Jesus. What they are talking about is, because they go to church. They go to church on Sunday, Monday to Friday, live for the devil. And they say, I know Jesus. But Jesus said, carry your cross daily though. Carry your cross on, on Monday. Carry your cross on Sunday. Jesus said, carry your cross daily. And do what? Follow me. So daily, you got to deny the world. Daily, you gotta stand for Christ. Daily, you gotta fight. You gotta stay in line. You gotta stay in alignment with God. Daily. And so, what I'm trying to tell you is how this God created heavens and the earth, and after He gave us all the things of this world. The Bible says that up the day that man fell to sin, everything turned upside down. The first murder was committed in the Bible by Adam's children. Cain and Abel. They were two brothers, literally. The other brother started having jealousy, envy, for no reason. He was like, well, why does God, it's like God loves this guy more. It seems like he doesn't love me. God accepts his, God accepts his worship more. It seems like, what, what's wrong with mine? And so he was jealous and he murdered his brother Abel. And you have to see the disrespect of this guy. When God came, God asked him, Cain, where is your brother? He responded to God with disrespect. He said, am I my brother's keeper? God said, well, I'm asking because his voice is crying from the ground. But thank God in the Bible, the Bible says the blood of Jesus speaks better than the blood of Abel. Meaning the blood of Jesus Christ has paid a huge sacrifice for the sin of the world so that those who call upon the name of the Lord Jesus will have the power in order to become children of God. Even President Joe Biden can be a child of God today if only he receives that power to be a child of God. Everybody can become a child of God. But the Bible says that when the gospel is presented, some will always reject it, some will accept it. I just hope you are on the side of the light. Because you see, there are consequences attached to these things. The consequences attached to these things. If you, because the Bible says, whatever you sow in this world, you will reap it. If you sow evil and corruption, you may be better off on the start. Later you will be exposed. And the Bible says that the price and the fruits that comes from bitterness and corruption, it's evil. But the Bible says that Jesus Christ is the light of the world. When you come to Jesus Christ, the light of God will begin to shine on you. You won't see this world the same again. So there's the day of salvation. So from time to time, God sends a lot of messengers, a lot of prophets to turn people back to God. God sent Moses, who parted the sea into two for the children of Israel to flee from Egypt. And the Bible says that this Moses, after he left, God raised other prophets like Joshua, many other prophets like Isaiah. But the more God tried to turn people to him, Thank you. 
the more turn people to him, the more people were running away. So God said, I'm going to go down by myself. He prophesied, it was prophesied many years ago that Jesus Christ, that God was going to come in human form. And some people say, oh, God cannot come in human form. It is in the Bible in Genesis 11. Go read it, you're going to see that. There was a time God came to visit Abraham. And God came in human form. And the Bible says Abraham made bread. And God ate. That was Jesus in the book of Genesis. He's been existing. But what happened is that when, when God now decided to come in human form, the Bible says he chose a virgin. He was born by a virgin called Mary. This woman was not the Savior. This woman was just a vessel, a vessel that God used. Even though some people today are worshipping her saying, Oh, oh, Virgin Mary, save my soul. She can't save your soul. She was just a vessel. We honor her for what God used her to do, just like we honor everybody else. But she was just a vessel. She's not to be worshipped or prayed to. But what I need to explain further is that this Jesus was born. He was not born by sperms. Jesus Christ, Yeshua, was conceived by the Holy Spirit. He was conceived by the Holy Spirit. Meaning that Jesus was not a normal person. Like you and I. He was not born in sin. Because the Bible says in Psalm 51 that every one of us, we were all born in sin. Shipping in iniquity. That's why you see evil and chaos in the world. And the only solution is found in Christ. The only answer is found in Christ. But what I want to emphasize is to let you know that when Yeshua came to this world, Yeshua is the Hebrew name for what? people call Jesus. Yeshua means Savior. Yeshua means light. Yeshua means deliverer. And so this Yeshua, when he came to the face of the earth, the first reason was not to give you a Lamborghini. Because I've spoken to and interacted with a lot of people. They say, if God loves me, why am I poor? If God loves me, why am I not having a Lamborghini? Look at the vain reasons. But when I read the Bible, I don't see where the Bible says Jesus came to give you a Lamborghini. I read the Bible, I see that he came to save you from the eternal flames of hell. That's the first reason why Jesus came. He came to save us from hell because, because of the sin that we committed in the Garden of Eden. The Bible says we became a lost creation. We became a lost people. And the Bible says, in, in, in case we, as we were condemned already, in that condemnation, recite, in that condemnation, recite eternal lake of fire in that condemnation recite hell and punishment of our sins we deserve it don't we oh if you think you don't deserve it you're proud well we deserve hell if you don't know that we deserve to go to hell <laughs> because if you don't see it like that you won't see the need of god to help you we deserve to go to hell i'm telling you we all deserve to go to hell The Bible says the Spirit of God looked upon the face of the earth. He found no one righteous. Not even one. We all deserve hell. But the Bible says in our midst, Jesus showed up. deserve to go to hell we all deserve hell I'm telling you everybody 
in this world, we all deserve hell. But guess what? In our mess, God showed up. In our mess, Yeshua showed up. That's why Jesus is different. That's why Jesus is not like any other person in this world. Not like any other fake gods in this world. Yeshua stands out. Jesus Christ stands out. Because in our mess, He showed up. The Bible says, even though we were yet sinners, Christ died for our sin. While we were yet sinners, Christ died for our sin. He didn't wait for us to be perfect. He didn't wait for us to be holy at that time. We were still sinning, but Christ still came to the world with an intention and motive to save us. And the plan worked. He fulfilled his mission. The Bible says that Jesus Christ at the age of 12 could challenge the doctors of the law. Because his wisdom did not come from human power. His wisdom was heavenly wisdom. The wisdom of God does not come by reading books. It comes from above. And so Jesus carried that wisdom and could challenge the doctors of the law. And even though you have a question and you want to ask me, you can walk down here and ask the question and I'm going to answer you. If you have some doubts or questions about the, the word of God, the scriptures, about the spirit of God, or if you need prayer, you can come over here. I'm going to pray with you. But what I, want to, what I want to let you know is the gospel of Jesus Christ. When Jesus came to this world, he came in order to save the sinner. You understand? The sinner is anyone that was born by sperms. If you were born by sperms in this world, you are considered a sinner already. Because the Bible says we're all born in sin. We're all shaping in iniquity. And the Bible says because we're born in sin, the reward for our sin is hell. The reward for our sin is condemnation. The reward for our sin is separation from God. But the Bible says that Jesus Christ showed up in order to deliver us and to heal our broken heart. And so, if you are hearing this gospel right now, I want to tell you this about Christ. Because today may be your last day to hear the gospel. Today may be the last moment of your life to hear about Jesus Christ. That is why whenever you hear the gospel of Jesus, it is good that you do not have in your heart so that the Holy Spirit will take over you. Life is short on this side, but there is an afterlife. Hallelujah! When I am, when I am, when I am dead and gone, I am not dead and gone. I just translated to another world. Oh yeah, I don't know about you. I don't know what you believe. If you believe in Muhammad, I don't know why. <laughs> that you, that's not heaven. You gotta if you what idols, you know that's not heaven. If you trust your celeb, trust your celebrities, trust your money, trust your degrees. Trust the treasures of this world. You won't find the life of God in there. Life is found in Christ and life begins with Jesus. And so today, God is offering you that great privilege. God is offering you that great opportunity to know Him. You can know Jesus Christ today personally. He's giving second chance. Jesus Christ he came to this world. The Bible says, Jesus, Yeshua, went through a lot in order to save you and I. Yeshua went through a lot. He had to go through a lot of rejection. Yeshua had to go through a lot of hatred, persecution, rejection, betrayal. He was betrayed many times for your sake, for my sake. And the Bible says that he made a great provision on the cross of Calvary. salvation for God so loved the world that he gave his only begotten son that whosoever believes in him will not perish but have eternal life Cincinnati today mission Jesus Christ is calling you today he's giving you a privilege in order to know personal Jesus Christ 2,000 years ago shed his blood upon the cross of Calvary in order to reconcile us back to God you can be that whosoever today you can be that whosoever today. It doesn't matter the sins you've done in your life. Jesus can wash you clean. Jesus can make you clean. Jesus Christ can save 
because my friend the reason I'm saying this is because the Bible says the wages of sin is death the only thing you will get out of sin is death depression and suicide I'm telling you a lot of people are putting smiling faces I prayed for a lot of people and I can tell you a lot of people put smiling faces but they're broken inside only Jesus can heal them only Jesus you may not show it your friend you may prove to your friend that you're strong you may show to people that you're strong but you're dying inside only the gospel of Jesus Christ can bring you back to life the Bible says the death and the resurrection of Jesus Christ brought us back to life but to enter into that experience you have to truly repent and turn to God when I'm talking about repentance I'm not talking about you saying Jesus I love you then you go to the nightclub oh yeah double-minded the Bible says you can't serve two masters at the same time you have to choose one that's why the people in this Bible they were not all about emotional display when they gave their life to Jesus same day they were ready to die for Jesus same day not the one today that people say I give my life to Jesus and then the next minute you see them going to the nightclub what kind of repentance is that that's not true repentance if you, if you don't repent for real you will not experience God for real and I say young man I wanted the real deal and at the age of 16 I experienced the Lord Jesus he revealed himself to me because I wanted the real deal I didn't want to be the fake one the, the fake repentance fake lifestyle and lying that oh I love Jesus and I'm living like the devil I'm just trying to tell you the secret of true repent of true experiencing the power of God you have to truly repent if you want to truly experience the power of God you have to truly repent repentance is a change of mind that leads to a change of action if your mind, if your mind changes your action will change if you want to travel to DC and you change your mind from traveling to DC you're definitely not gonna travel to DC in same way repentance is change your mind and put it on God when you change your mind and you put it on God the Spirit of God takes over when you truly repent and turn to God the Bible says a lot of things will happen to you number one you obtain the forgiveness of Christ your sins will be forgiven no matter the sins you've ever committed in this life number two God will begin to pull you out of darkness that's why you don't see me in the nightclub no more yes God forgive me that doesn't mean I should keep going there because Jesus said go and sin no more Jesus never said go and sin some more because he wants a relationship with you but it marvels me a lot of us every day we don't think about our eternity every single day I ask a lot of people where will you go when you die some people say uh, I'm gonna come back as an apple tree I'm like what in the world what in the world you're gonna die and come back as an apple tree where did you get this belief sir just that you don't interact with people in fact today people don't want to interact no more everybody is locked up on their phone people don't even want to interact no more but guess what I interact with a lot of people one-on-one -on -one. and when I ask them where they will go when they die I get shocking answers shocking and I began to understand why Jesus Christ said only few will go to heaven that's why I want you to be among the few. I asked some guy in Reno, Nevada, I asked him, where will you go when you die, sir? He said, I'm going to go to planet Mars and I'm going to be there with aliens. I'm like, what in the world? Where did you get this belief, sir? But you see, according to the Holy Scriptures, the Bible says that our assurance in eternity is in Jesus Christ, Yeshua. And the Bible says when you die, if your faith was in Yeshua you will live again forever that is why anyone who is a believer in Christ if you die you are not dead you just translated to another world to a better place but today everybody think all doves go to heaven so someone lives for the devil and then they die we say RIP she's in a better place now really a better place anybody that RIP RIP that's why I told people don't invite me to your funeral if you don't want me to preach the truth because I'm a preach on, on eternity as it is in the scriptures 
I'm not gonna say, oh, this person is here now. I'm not God. I don't know where the person is. But all I know is the Bible says, except a man is born again, he cannot enter the kingdom of heaven. Meaning that God says everyone needs to be born again in order to inherit the kingdom of God. He says you must be born of water and born of the spirit. So when you repent and truly come to Jesus, the spirit of God takes over you. And so my friend, today is the day of salvation. Maybe you are hearing this gospel of Jesus Christ. And I want to reveal to you that Jesus Christ suffered on the cross for you and I. He shed his precious blood on that cross in order to redeem you and I. The Bible says on that cross, Jesus cried and said, Father, forgive them, for they do not know what they are doing. Cincinnati, this is a new, the new move of God in your city. God is calling you to repent. God is calling Cincinnati to repent. All the things you are doing, God is watching. Just because God is silent does not mean God is absent. Don't, don't fool yourself to think God's silence means God's absence. Oh, when God is silent, you better be careful. <laughs> Have you ever like done something when you were a little child and your dad enters and he just looks at you like this? You must hear that when he speaks. So God's silence. <laughs> Be careful when God is silent in your life. Careful. God's silence is not God's absence. He's watching. Everything you do, He's watching. But you see, today is a day of grace and mercy. God wants to show you grace and mercy. The Bible says God is rich in mercy. I know if you enter Fintech Bank, you're going to see people rich in dollars. I don't think you're going to see anybody that rich in mercy. Only God is rich in mercy. And the mercy of God can be given to you today. God can share with you that mercy today. You can receive the mercy of Jesus Christ today. If only you turn to God. There is no sin that God cannot forgive. God can forgive every single sin you've ever committed. Even right now, God can forgive every single sin you've ever committed. Even if you divorced 50 times before and your life is messed up, God can forgive you. God can have mercy on you right now. Your sin is not greater than the blood of Jesus. But now you have to make up your mind whether you want to turn to God or you want to continue living in sin. But I want to tell you the consequences of all. The Bible says whatever you sow in this life, you reap it in the afterlife. So if, in case you are asking, what if I die without Jesus? If you die without Jesus, you will go to hell. Many people don't want to tell you this. Maybe because they have not really seen Jesus. When you see Jesus, you are not scared of anything else. You are just ready to please Him, not men. Other people, they are scared of it because they want money. I don't need your money. Stay with it. But I'm going to tell you the truth of God's word just as it is. If God tells me to tell you about heaven and hell, that's what I'm going to talk about. But I'm here to tell you that you don't have to go to hell because Jesus Christ paid the price for you on the third day. He rose again from the dead. The resurrection of Jesus Christ has brought life unto us, my friend. Why then do you want to go to hell when Jesus already provided the price? When he already paid the price on the cross for your sin? Why then do you want to burn in the lake of fire? Do you think that's God's will for you? It's not God's will for you. God's will for you is for you to know Him personally. Salvation is a gift from God. You can receive that gift right now. And when I'm talking about the gift of salvation, it has nothing to do with Santa Claus. Human beings created that one. Jesus never came with some red and white dressing saying, Ho, 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 receive your shoe. Ho, 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 receive your car. That's religion, tradition. And what traditional religion does is it covers your eye. It's like a veil on your eye. And you can't see the real Christ. You can't see the real Messiah, Yeshua. Religion and tradition. It makes people think Jesus came here for material purposes. Jesus never came here for material purposes. He came here for eternal purposes. And the Bible says that when Jesus came, he didn't come to say, Ho, ho, ho. Mary, Mary, receive your call. He came to give you life. So before you are, ho, 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 repent first. Before saying ho ho ho, Mary Mary, no. 
Jesus said, I came so that they might have life and have it more abundantly. And so Jesus Christ now defined to us what this, this life is. He said, I am the way. I am the truth. I am the life. Wow. You see that now? The first statement was, Jesus said, I came so that they can have life and have it more abundantly. Second statement, Jesus now said, I am the life. I am that life. So Jesus came so that you can have him. And so a lot of people today think life begins when you work in Fitted Bank or life begins when you are the president of America. A lot of people think life begins when you got a Lamborghini and, and, and you are famous and popular. Life begins with Jesus. If you forget everything, don't forget this. The day you begin to live is the day Jesus begins to live through you. Jesus said, I am the life. And so today, my friend, you can receive that eternal life today. In case you're wondering, how do I receive this eternal life? How do I receive this life of God? I want to tell you that to receive that life of God, just humble yourself and cry out to God and repent and God will hear your cry. The Bible says the wages of sin is death. The more you sin, the more you die. But the Bible says the gift of God is eternal life. So God has a gift for you. Like I told you, the gift God has for you is not the fake Santa Claus. Fake, fake. Santa Claus is fake. It's not the one that comes and says, Ho, 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 take your car, honey. Jesus didn't come to give you those gifts. He came to give you eternal life. That's the gift he came to give you. Eternal gift. Jesus doesn't give you temporal gifts. He can touch people to give you temporal gifts, but he doesn't give temporal gifts. Jesus came to give you an eternal life. So today is a salvation. If you are hearing this gospel right now, and you want to receive eternal life, you don't even need to come here for me to pray for you. Yes, I can pray for you, but I don't save people. I'm just a messenger. The one who saves is Yeshua. Yeshua, the King of Heaven. I hope you know Jesus created you. Colossians 1 verse 16 says he created everything. Things that are visible and things that are invisible, including you. Uh-huh. Jesus created you. So today is the day of salvation, my friend. If you hear this gospel today, please do not hide in your heart. Jesus is coming back soon. Prepare yourselves. I know you, you are ready for your marriage, ready for your birthday, ready for your party. But are you ready for your death day? Are you ready for your death day? The way you prepare to go to work, have you prepared to go on judgment day? Are you prepared? Are you ready? If you doubt one second, it means you are not ready. That's why we, you need the gospel of Jesus. The gospel of Jesus reconciles you back to God. God bless you, sir. The gospel of Jesus, what it does is it reconciles you back to God. It glues you to God. And today the gospel of Jesus Christ can touch your soul. And you will be, will be able to inherit the kingdom of God. Today is the day of salvation. Do not miss this opportunity that God is giving you. Tomorrow is not promised. Call upon the name of Jesus today. Say that many are the plans in a man's heart, but it is the purpose of God that will prevail. I want to tell you this morning, this beautiful day, that Jesus love you, my brother and sister. Jesus love you, mother and father. Jesus love you, young woman. Proverbs chapter 19, verse 21 says that many are the plans in a man's heart, but it is the purpose of God that will prevail. Whatever that man, it will not stay forever. Whatever that man created will not stay forever. Whatever that you desire in your heart, it will not stay for what God, what God wants to do in your life, it will stay forever, eternity. Bible says that heaven and earth will pass away, but my word will never pass away. Amen. What you see with your eyes, one day will vanish. The life that you desire, it will finish. The money that you desire, it will finish. The car that you it will finish. If you give your life to Jesus, you will stay forever with Him in heaven. Amen. Heaven 
will say, but my word will never pass away. Jesus say, God love you. That's why we are here this morning to tell you that Jesus love you. God sent his son Jesus Christ to die for your sin. Young men, young women, mother and father, every head will pass away. Everything that you desire, everything that you desire, just like the grass withered and the flower fade. Bible say that what you see with your eyes will vanish, will finish. But what God will create in your life, your life is an eternal life. It will stay forever. Your life will stay forever. Everything that you touch and you see, finally will finish. But your life will stay forever. This morning I have a question to ask you. Is your life secure to stay forever into eternity? Is your life secure with Jesus to stay forever? Did you receive Jesus Christ as your eternal Savior to stay forever? What you see with your eyes will finish. Money you, you, you desire money will vanish away. Everything that you want to possess in this world will finish. But A life that came from God will stay forever. In Psalms chapter 8 verse 4, What is man that thou art mindful of, that thou hast created him with crown and glory? What is, man? what is man that God is so mindful of? What is man that thou art mindful of in his world? because God has created man in his image and in his likeness. Bible says in the beginning, God for man created man in his image and his likeness. Man exists in the presence of God. God placed man in the Garden of Eden in the presence of God. Just like every other creation, fish was created to exist in the water. Bed was created to fly in the sky. All the other animals were created and given the environment to exist. But man was created to exist in the presence of God. That's why when man live outside the presence of God, man will start to face problems. Man will start to face situation. God designed man to exist in the presence of God. When you are living outside the presence of God, you will start to face problems. You will start to face situation. My brother and my sister, the greatest need of man is not money. The greatest need of man is not wealth. The greatest need of man is not any other thing that man desire. The greatest need of man is not lust of the flesh, lust of the eye, pride of life. The greatest need of man is the presence of God. When men live outside the presence of God, men will start to face problems. Men will start to face situation. Because when God created man in the beginning, God placed man in the presence of God. The greatest need of man is the presence of God. When God lost man, when God lost man, man left God and came out of God's presence. God sent his only begotten son and he said that whosoever believe in Jesus Christ, whosoever believe in Jesus Christ and repent from their sin, God will restore them back to his presence. My brother and my sister, if the only thing that you are missing today in your life is the presence of God, you can have everything of this world, but you will still desire to have it until and unless you find Jesus, you find life eternal. Until and unless you find Jesus, you find love in Man did not lose what man desired to seek. Man did not lose the creation. Man left the presence of God. The greatest need of man is not money, it's the presence of God. If you find the presence of God, you will find that your life is full of joy. Your life is full of true happiness. Your life is full of everything that you are seeking. The world will not satisfy your desire. The world will not satisfy your desire one thing after another. You can change things, but you will not be satisfied until and unless you find the presence of God. Man did not live money. Man did not live material things, but man left the presence of God. When God created man, God want man to inhabit his presence. God want man to exist. God want man to have fellowship in his presence. But man desire to walk away from God. When you leave the presence of God, you will start to encounter problems. The greatest need of this world, greatest need of man is the presence of God. That's why God sent Jesus. That's why God sent Jesus. 
Jesus said that if you find me, you find life. Bible says in John 10, 10 that the devil come to steal, kill, and destroy. But Jesus said, I come to give life and life in its own fullness. The fullness of life is found in Jesus Christ. Jesus Christ said, I am the way, the truth, and the life. There is no other way apart from Jesus. Bible say that Jesus say, I am the way, the truth, and the life. No one goes to the Father except through me and by me. My brother and my sister, you did not lose anything and everything that you want. You did not lose what you desire. You did not lose what you were looking after. Bible say that the enemy come to steal, kill, and destroy. What you lose is the presence of God. Amen. What you left is the presence of God. And when you receive Jesus Christ Amen. into your life, you will find life. Amen. Life, life in its fullness. Life, true life is found only in Jesus Christ. Bible says in Proverbs 19:21, many are the parents in the bedside, but it is the purpose of God prevail. Whatever you see with your eyes, whatever yes. you touch, the life and the experience that you want, it will perish one day. Yes. Fire will come every yes. day, but they that abide in God shall live forever from everlasting to everlasting. Yeah! Yeah! Jesus love you. Amen! If you live, if you left money, God will send you money. If you left car, God will send you car. But God did not send all these things. God sent Jesus because men did not leave everything. What you were searching for, you did not lose. The only thing that you lose is the presence of God. But I come to give life and life its own fullness. Life its own fullness. There is a desire in every man's heart. There is a desire, needs, and want that every man on this earth they want to fulfill. Every man on this earth they want to fulfill. Yeah, 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 yeah. There is a deep wound. There is a deep desire in the heart of men. There are many, many other plants in a man's heart that man tries to fill that vacuum. Man try to fill that everyness with everything that is happening in the world. But let me tell you by the grace of God, that only vacancy, that only desire in your heart, it can only be feel by yes. Jesus Christ. It is the vacancy of God in the heart of man. Yes. If you know that you, you, you are looking for life, you are yeah. looking for satisfaction. My brother and my sister, let me tell you by the grace of God, true satisfaction will only be found in Jesus. True satisfaction will be only found in God. Even you ask the richest man in the world, are you, happy, are you satisfied? They tell you no, they want more money, they want more pleasure, they want more car. You will have desire of the only and you will want to have the most glow. But let me tell you, you will never be satisfied. It doesn't matter how many money you possess in the bank yeah. account. It doesn't matter how many cars you have in your garage. It doesn't matter how many company you have. It doesn't matter how beautiful you are. Wow. It doesn't matter how handsome you are. Wow. But let me tell you, by the grace of God, the only thing that men left, the only thing that men desire, is the presence of God. Your soul is a spirit being. Your soul desires the presence of God. You are not the spirit being. You are not a physical being. You are not a flesh being. You are not created by material. But you are designed as a spirit being. You are designed to dwell in the presence of God. Wow. You are designed to dwell in the presence of God. Amen. You are designed to dwell in the presence of God. Amen. You are the vessel of God. You are the image of God. You are designed to dwell in the presence of God. God Amen. designed you so that he can come and reside in you. Yes. God designed you. You are the house of God. You are created in this image and his likeness. If there is one thing that you miss in your life, it is none other than God. Come on. If there is one thing that you miss in your life, it is none other than Jesus. Amen. Ask the richest man in this world. Ask the guy. Ask the CEO. Ask the people. People are going around looking for satisfaction. 